what of the school of thought that seems to suggest that the youth spend most time in cheap celebrity gossip, soap operas and following soccer, especially the English Premier League, and actually are not well versed with the current political, social, economic dynamics of, of our country? Uh, I, I think uh, that's a very big challenge on the part of young people that they must, uh, they must overcome if they are to play a more meaningful role in their society. Uh, it is true that most of them spend most of their time watching movies, watching soccer, uh, watching music, and all sorts of things that have very little uh, impact, very little, very little relevance, very little usefulness to society uh, that cannot impact on, on, their, on their empowerment in any way. So we feel that's really a real challenge that they must overcome themselves. And no one will, will do it for themselves. They have to act themselves if they are to be uh, uh, relevant. Surely, uh, the youth have a, have, have a role to play, have had a role to play in their, in their marginalization. They are not creative enough. They are not useful enough. They spend most, most, most of their time in, in things that are not so constructive uh, to their future to themselves and to their families. So this is a challenge that they themselves must overcome if they are to be useful in this country. But again, the elders also have a role, an obligation to, 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 to stop uh, underestimating the potential of young people, to stop calling, convincing young people that they are the leaders of tomorrow. They are certainly the leaders of today. Some of them have the most potential to lead today. today. So you can't simply uh, silence them by calling them the leaders, leaders of tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, the elders also have a role, have an obligation to, 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 to play as far as uh, empowering young people and as far as stopping their marginalization is concerned. So how do we empower ourselves? Uh, first of all, uh, we've got to seek knowledge. We've got to be informed. Many young people are not informed. They, they don't read papers. They take long to read books. Uh, uh, they are totally ignorant about what is happening in their society. So you, 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 cannot, you, cannot, you cannot lead when you don't read. You have to be informed in order to, 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 to have constructive ideas, not to be relevant to your, to your society. Secondly, we must stop allowing ourselves to be manipulated by the elders. Why should a young person allow himself to, 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 to throw stones at a political rally, at a demonstration? Why do you allow these elders to manipulate you, to use you, to do all sorts of dirty things that they themselves cannot do. Why do you allow to be bribed? The ruling party has infiltrated most of the opposition parties here, but largely through young people. Why should young people be so, be, 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 be so careless? Be, 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 uh, why, why should they allow themselves to, to, to the problem is that we don't work. We don't want to, to, to generate income for ourselves. So we are, for that matter, we are easily bribed, we are easily compromised. Mm. But if we, we, we work, if we, we find jobs, if we create our own jobs, uh, if we work hard, then we shall be resistant to all that kind of manipulation. But there is no way to resist it when you are expecting bread from those elders. There is hardly any fundamental change that has taken place in Uganda. The kind of corruption that characterized the previous regimes is even worse today. Mm -hmm. The kind of uh, torture, people are being detained in safe houses. I don't see any difference between, be, 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 uh, between the kind of torture I'm saving is perpetrating from the kind of torture that was perpetrated under Amin's regime, under Oputu's regime. Mm -hmm. People are still dying today. In the North, people have died for, 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 for 20 years. Mm? And even outside the north, throughout Uganda, remember the President Museveni, in the name of, in the name of, eradic of ending the ADF rebellion, he instituted a reign of terror, a campaign of terror, killing so many people, especially Muslims in this country, in the name of fighting the ADF rebellion. Mm. He executed them, summary, summary executions, detained them without trial, in safe houses, and subjected them to all forms of torture. So is that, is that the kind of fundamental change that you're talking about? There is absolutely no fundamental change. The education sector is deteriorating every day. Makerere University uh, is admitting students beyond their capacity, beyond its capacity. 
uh, a, a UPE graduate, a graduate of, you know, of primary, prim, primary school, cannot write anything down apart from their name. So is that the kind of fundamental change he promised? There is absolutely no change at all. Okay. President Museveni's history demonstrates that he, 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 he's willing to butcher and torture to achieve his goals. His present, the way he's behaving today, proves that he has not repented. He is unrepentant and not willing to reform. Mm. And therefore his future is one that we should be worried about. Mm. We have no hope in him in himself. Yeah. We are totally worried about how he's running this country. Yeah. We have Supreme Court rulings mm. to the effect that we've never held actually any free and fair election. Exactly. This time round, the opposition did got caught. Mm. Constitutional avenues failed. Mm. We can't assemble, we can't freely gather, we can't have anything of our own mm. without under close scrutiny by the state. Mm. So what would you suggest? Or what do you have to say about uh, the civil disobedience campaigns that are taking toll in the country? Uh, that, that, that is truly a very wise move. Mm. Uh, to challenge President Museveni's tyranny through walking to work, uh, through all sorts of civil disobedience. That is a wise move that all Ugandans should embrace. Mm. Unfortunately, uh, it has not stood the test of time. Mm. The walk to work protest had started sending a clear message to Museveni that Ugandans are tired of the exploitation he's subjecting them to. Unfortunately, given his ruthlessness, the brutality with which he cracked down on the people peacefully walking to work, did not uh, ensure that uh, such protests continue. Uh, I wish they had continued uh, until, probably because what happened in, Tah in Tahrir Square in Egypt and elsewhere, uh, until it happened here. But unfortunately, we don't see that happening. President Museveni, uh, seems to be determined to crack down on all dissent, to crack down on all criticism, to crack down on all protests, to, to prolong his stay uh, in power. Mm -hmm. If the organizers can devise, devise other means of, of sending their, their, their message, of, 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 of showing the world they are discontented uh, uh, with President Museveni, of making Uganda ungovernable for the tyrant, that would be that would be better. Uh, I wish they, 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 they can devise. Uh, they, they could devise more, 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 more ways of expressing their their, their concerns through peaceful manners. Uh, that, that that would be certainly better.